I really don't understand why everybody is so negative about this new president and that he's going to destroy the markets. I mean, I agree. You may not agree on his policies. You may not agree with a full democratic control of, of the House, the Senate, the White House. I mean, yeah, I get it. But why are we so negative about this market? I know that it's, it's an extreme period of time. We've gone from one extreme to now another extreme. I mean, 10 executive orders in the first, what, 24 hours? 10,000 potential jobs are going to be lost because the Keystone pipeline is being shut down. I get it. But why is this affecting the market? In this video, I'm going to show you why I believe that the next 100 days are going to be epic in the markets. Here's why I believe people are negative. One, it's a full democratic controlled House, Senate, presidency. That's pretty, uh, cards are in their favor. Whatever they decide to do, it could happen. Most likely happen because they got the majority. I mean, that's crazy. That's a negative. Second thing is our national debt is $27 trillion and growing. I mean, that's a problem. That's a negative. Every YouTuber, who's in the financial sector and talking about financials has at least done a video on why this market's going to fall apart with this new president. I mean, negative sentiment is at all time highs. People, I'm getting emails and calls from people saying, oh, this is it. It's over. We're done for. It's 1929. But is it really 1929? Are we set up the same way as 1929? Could we have another 1929? Of course we could have another 1929. Or we could have another 2019. I mean, it's really comes down to the math and the money flow. Throw in there that the United States is really divided amongst race, amongst political uh, affiliation. Uh, I mean, it's polarized. We're seeing it in the news and they're putting it out there every day. I mean, there's nothing positive on the news channels, the CNNs, the Foxes, the MSNBCs, NBCs, CBS, ABCs, everybody sees. I mean, everybody's negative. Nobody's really looking at positive elements. So here's what you need to consider doing. Shut off your TV. Shut off all the news channels. Quit reading the media. Quit making decisions based on, on what sells ads. I mean, think about it. If you owned a TV station or a station in general, how do you get people to buy, you know, watch? You talk about negativity because it's easy to be negative. It's hard to be optimistic. It's hard to be happy and full of joy. It takes work. What people don't want to do is work. So here's my take on markets. And I think if, you, if you've watched my videos in the past, what you'll notice is that I really don't put a lot into the narrative. I'm not following what the CNBCs of the world are talking about now. Instead, I'm looking at the math. I'm looking at things that are indicators to where markets are going, where they're headed, and where they're not headed. The first place I look at is trend. I break trends down into three, 30, three periods in a, in a sense. So a trade is less than three weeks. An intermediate trend is three weeks to three months or 90 days. And then after three years is the tail end of a trend. And after three years, you should start to see that investment tail off. But what I'm looking at today is the intermediate trend. And when I look at the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ or the Dow Jones or other indexes, I'm seeing equity indexes specifically, I'm seeing upward trends. Look at the commodity market. It is in an upward trend, has been since June. And if you don't know why that is, I'll tell you here in a minute. But tr trend is really your friend. And when I refer to trend, I'm looking at the intermediate time frame. I want to see that over a three period time frame, so three weeks, three months, three years, uh, three days is a trade, 
So if the movement is up in a three-day period, it could abruptly end within three weeks. If it's under three weeks and it ends, well, that was a trade. But if it's between three weeks and three months, that's a trend. That's an intermediate trend. And those are our friends. So when we're looking at our investments and we're looking to put money to work, or we're trying to decipher if the world's going to end today because CNBC or NBC or Bloomberg were saying, oh, the world's going to end. And they just recently had a hedge fund manager who's talking their book online. What we're seeing is you have to identify what the underlying trend is. And so I'm looking for intermediate trends. The second thing I'm looking at is volatility. I want to see where volatility is because volatility is a leading indicator to our motions. What is the market doing? What are they pricing in? What are the, what's the smart money doing? And when we see movement in volatility, if it's to the downside below 18 on the VIX, the volatility index, which is that measurement of volatility uh, against the S&P 500, it tells me below 18, I'm in a bull market. And think about this. Janet Yellen is head of the Treasury, Secretary of the Treasury under the Biden administration. If you go back between 2014 and 2018 when she was head of the Fed, the markets did great. And volatility actually hit its all-time low of 9.51. Today, we're right around 21 on the VIX. 9.51 is way down there, and markets were way up. So during her reign between 2014 and 2018, we saw markets go higher. Well, she's head of the Treasury under Biden. She's going to be aggressive with keeping markets going higher, which means taking on more debt as a country. I know people are like, oh, it's going to end. It's going to end. But remember, the household of our government is way different than our personal households. Why? Because they can print money. We can't print currency as individuals, but as the government, they can print. And as long as the confidence is behind the U.S. dollar, as the reserve currency of the world, they can print as much as they want. And people will use the dollar. There is a shortage of US, of US dollars throughout the world, as you saw during the liquidity crisis back in March, and then also September of 2019. There was a demand for US dollars, and they exchanged their treasuries, and I'm talking governments, institutions, big places that come to the Fed window, and they exchange out their dollars for treasuries or treasuries for dollars. And we saw a rush on dollars because we were shutting down. So Janet Yellen is actually a bullish signal for markets for however long she's in office. Let's go back to volatility. When volatility is below 18, it's bullish. Under Yellen, we hit all-time lows in the VIX at 9.51, right around 2017-2018. But if you look at the chart, it was trending down in the time she was in office. Bullish signal. If the VIX is between 18 and 27, well, that's a trader's market like we're seeing now. The VIX has between, been bouncing between 19 and 27 here recently. It's a choppy market. And if you're a short-term trader, three weeks or less, you're making money in this market. You just got to follow the VIX and your risk ranges within the positions you're buying. Now, when we bust over 27, that's a risk off signal. That is bullish on the VIX or on volatility, and it's bearish on equities. And we saw that back in after February 27th of 2020, we saw the VIX go up, spike up, and break that 27 mark, and then shoot higher. What happened? Well, COVID hit, money liquidity dried up, so that was the exchanging treasuries for US dollars and dollars dried up, which drove the market down. And we saw all 30% uh, down, I believe, uh, right around March 23rd. But once liquidity came back in the market, the markets went higher and the VIX went back down under 27. Now, if you were watching the VIX at that time and you knew how that worked, at that peak of the VIX at the top side, that was probably a sign to say, you know what? I may want to start buying some stuff on discount. I want to, may want to buy some companies that are going to rally hard. 
And that's what happened. We saw a rally hard from the lows uh, in the stock market, in the highs of the VIX, oppositely correlated, and we saw all-time highs being met. I mean, like day after day after day. It reminded me back in 99 when Amazon was going up like 5%, 10% a day. New high, new high, new high. And then the other thing I look at is volume. And volume can trade within a, a channel, but once it busts below a certain channel, it's maybe a sign that the market or whatever you're looking at volume-wise is going to bust in an opposite direction. And as you can see in this chart, you'll see the ups and downs of the volume of the S&P 500. As you saw, see there in the center, there's a channel. If it bounces around there, you got, you, got vol you, know, you got volume, you got up and down movement, regular volume. But when it busts higher, like it did in March, that's a sell. I mean, though, that's where we saw the downturn in the markets. And we see a bust lower below its lower channel. Well, that can be a leading indicator that, well, maybe markets are about to get ready to have an upset stomach. Now, all of this is really decipherable with rate of change, and it's the speed of rate of change. How fast do we change our behavior from yesterday to today or from today from a week ago? If we see a massive move in our rate of change, all of a sudden there is something turning. And we saw that back in February of 29, uh, 2020. We saw a little bit of that uh, during uh, what October, uh, November, December, actually December of uh, 2018. We saw a massive rate of change, a quick movement, uh, scaring the pants off uh, of somebody kind of movement. And that rate of change is a great indicator of what markets are about to do. All right, I said I would talk about commodities and the relationship to the dollar, or I referenced the US dollar in some way or another early in the video. The US dollar is really a leading indicator to what sectors are potentially gonna do well or, do, or not do well. And the US dollar here recently has been continuously going down. Going back to that peak in uh, late March in the US dollar, I believe it got up around a dollar, 0 0.05, a dollar and five cents. Uh, and then all of a sudden, because there was a lack of supply of US dollars, supply and demand, if there's a lack of supply, the values go up. And if there's more supply, the values go down. And so we saw that peak in March in the US dollar, and then it came down really, really hard. And now today it trades as low as 89 cents and as high as right around 90 cents and a half. Here's the thing about the dollar. We're printing United States, not you, hopefully not, that would be counterfeiting. The United States is printing dollars, so we're supplying the market with more and more. And we are, by doing that, the cost of commodities uh, it has an inverse relationship. So lumber, I mean, we've seen all-time highs in lumber, and now we're seeing all moves in energy. And if you go back to October, or so in energy, you'll see that it made a turn, it bottomed, and it started moving higher. And if you've been in that, that play, you've been doing really well. My thought is the dollar will continue to devalue, which it'll have whatever it has an opposite correlation to on an intermediate trend basis. Remember, I'm talking intermediate trends, more between three weeks and three months. In that period of time, if we continue to see the dollar go down, and yeah, it'll go up like it has the last couple of days, but it will, as it comes down because of the devaluation of the US dollar, commodities will go up. So these are areas where we, by looking at volume, volatility, the price action of your underlying investments, along with the US dollar and the correlation to that asset you're looking to buy, if you use those, you can actually build a really well risk managed portfolio but it takes work and it takes effort and it takes day to day writing it down and following the trends and studying. I believe the market's going higher in the next 100 days. I believe by looking at the global macro side of things, growth is happening. We're seeing expansion. We're seeing industries come back. We're seeing uh, somewhat of un uh, unemployment going down, 
but we're seeing a change and we're seeing money flowed into the market. And with this new stimulus package that most likely will pass under the Biden administration, we'll see more money go in the hands of retail investors. And what happened when that ha when we saw a stimulus, the first stimulus package back in April, May, and June, we saw over 10 million new brokerage accounts opened in the year 2020. And a lot of it was amateur, just starting to invest, investors who started buying markets. And that became a big part of the daily volume on the New York Stock Exchange, driving markets higher. Well, if we get more stimulus packages and the checks are bigger to the individuals, chances are it's going back into the market. Like I've referenced before in my other videos, please check them out and also hit the like button and subscribe. He has started talking to me about investing and buying stocks and he's 18. Well, all of a sudden it's a daily conversation that he and I has. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? How do I best risk manage my portfolio? When should I take profits? When should I not? Boy, I'm killing it in these stocks, blah, 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 blah. That will continue when, as long as they have money. And I think that's another reason why this market will go higher. So I'm very optimistic over the next 100 days. I try not to look at the market further out than 180 days because trends change. It's a quarter system. There's two quarters in 180 days and things can change. That takes us to the middle of the year. So under the Biden administration for the next 100 days or so, I think markets are gonna go higher and there's a lot of opportunity out there to capitalize on it because there are industries that have not performed well in 2020. And because of the correlation, the US dollar, they are presenting incredible opportunities to capitalize on for the next 100 to 180 days. And that's why I'm bullish on this market for the next 100 to 180 days.